This is edition two of FAD Weekly. If you like what you see, then please subscribe, like us, and spread the word and the link. To the capital of the north of the United Kingdom and in his hometown, Dayon Brony. For a city once at the heart of a revolution, an industrial one at that, the challenge to adapt to a future that is both digital and technological is immense. Architecture of scale and fashion with edge are major signposts. As the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, Manchester was the original modern city. And now it is truly modern again, with one architectural firm having more to do with this than any other. My name is Ian Simpson, I'm an architect, and I'm practicing in London and Manchester. We're here now at the top of the Hilton Beetham Tower, which is at levels 47 and 48. We designed the building back in 2007 which is primarily a hotel with residential sitting over the top of it. And right at the very beginning, um, I decided that this was an opportunity to create the environment that I really wanted to live in. I bought the top two floors as a shell, and then I had to fit out the interior as a separate, separate piece of work. Part of that was the creation of a, a 4,000 square foot olive grove, which I had this sort of notion of right at the very beginning. What I wanted to do was, was to create something quite distinctive that was a contrast between the inside and the outside, but one that I could use on a day-to-day -day basis. So Ian, uh, logistically, was it a nightmare to, to, to plan this? Logistically, it was, it was a nightmare because each of these trees, ten and a half, had to be hoisted up and dropped in through the roof and then looked after and stored for about 18 months before I could actually position them. I just wanted to be able to walk underneath the canopy, so these trees are actually five metres high, these trees, so they're hundreds of years old. One of the things about this space and, and the way that it's been furnished is that there are these distinct places that I've been able to create, whether that's the more formal kitchen and dining area that uses rosewood, or whether it's what I refer to as the snug, which is a, a place that you sit around the TV and that uses a series of teak pieces with, with warmer colours. And then there's a more formal living space behind me that, that is, is a double height space. And I use these spaces at different times of the week. And is that what drew you to this location? The fact that you could just basically, you know, position yourself at the centre of everything? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, I mean it, it is just a little bit away from the city core. Um, it's right on the edge, so you get the benefit of the city centre. It, it feels really serene when you're just sitting in the corner here on a Sunday morning reading the papers. You can literally, in 45 seconds, be on the street, or you can be out of it. And I like that juxtaposition of... Uh, that you can create vertically rather than spatially. A lot of my ideas and a lot of the themes inherent in the work that I, that I produce are based around the objects and, and the art that I surround myself with. What interests me is, is mixing, obviously, contemporary with vintage pieces and quite an eclectic arrangement of things. I'm just attracted to form and shape, materials and design. And if something's beautiful, whether it's an African mask, a Danish 50s piece of furniture, or whether it's a piece of ceramics. You can see beauty in all sorts of different things. I mean, that's one of the great things, obviously, being at height, is you can just see how accessible the city is. It's literally out there in front of you, the whole city, and you can, you can see how you can just literally walk across it. 